right now. So thank you very much everyone for joining us. Um, as I said, my name is Dan Raven Ellison. I'm a geographer um, and I started the Slow Ways Initiative just over a year ago now. Um, and in a moment, I'm gonna give you a short, very short presentation on Slow Ways, but I think Darren, you're gonna say hi first. Who's gonna tell us about the website in a moment. Hi, yeah, I'm, I'm Darren. I live uh, near uh, Dan in Ealing and uh, I've had a very hectic couple of months building the site really. So um, we're, um, it's, it's been a really good start though. So it's very exciting. Right, thank you very much, Darren. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now and take you through some basics of slow ways before Darren takes us through the website in more detail. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Yeah. Right, so slow ways. It's just so exciting to be able to share this project with you. And I think many people watching will be aware of the fact that this is a long time coming. Um, we started this initiative a long time ago, um, but you know, not just that, we've had you know, various lockdowns to deal with, which have delayed us in delivering this. We would have loved to have launched last year, but we just haven't been able to uh, because of COVID. But to be honest, the silver lining for us is it's given us more time to make a better website. And what's going to be shared with you this evening really is the beginning of a very long journey on creating uh, what we hope will be a fantastic resource um, for you all. Just to say that our fundamental purpose or fundamental purpose of what we're trying to do is encourage more people to walk more often, further and for more purposes. And while there are lots of organisations and groups out there who are very interested in, in encouraging more people to walk, we think slow ways is a little bit different because we want to get people walking further but also, you know, remembering that actually we can walk, you know, um, short, but also long distances for lots of different purposes as well, whether it's for recreation and just enjoyment, whether we want to get to a music festival, whether we're trying to get home from work or from university or somewhere, whether we're dealing with a bereavement and we need time to reflect, whether we're going on a pilgrimage or whether we're doing a challenge event. There are lots of reasons why we might want to go further and for more purposes. And I think that's one of the things that Slow Ways is great for. So I'm not going to take you through the complete history of Slow Ways, but I'm just going to give you a very, very quick uh, summation of it. So phase one of Slow Ways during 2020 was all about creating a first draft and a provocation of the Slow Ways network. Something that would really inspire me, hopefully you and others to want to get involved in the initiative. So rather than just doing a, a small pilot in a small part of the country that maybe would have never kicked off, we challenge ourselves to create a complete network in a short period of time. And during the first lockdown of 2020, um, 700 volunteers signed up through social media, were trained through Zoom um, and created 7,000 walking routes that stretch for, for 100,000 kilometers. That's equivalent of two and a half laps around the equator. And these routes connect up two and a half thousand terminal destinations at the end of these routes. And about a year's worth of time was invested in a single month. And the founding principle of the slow ways is this idea that we should all be able to walk reasonably, directly, safely, enjoyably between any two neighboring settlements. And we believe that if we can't make that journey on, on foot or by wheel, reasonably, safely, directly, enjoyably, then probably something's going wrong. And that might sound like an extraordinary statement to make, but at the end of the day, before the motor car, that's exactly how we got between places. And actually that's exactly the, um, the expectation we have for our cars today. So all we're saying is that in the light of the ecological crisis, the health crisis, the economic crisis we find ourselves in, we should be able to walk these journeys um, if, if we want to. And it's that idea of these um, journeys, be able to walk reasonably directly and, and straight between uh, places that creates this incredible geometric network that you can see on this, this map here, which I think makes it far easier to imagine and plan journeys both over short and longer distances as well. So that phase one was all about creating a, 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 a provocation and a draft of the network. Phase two that we're in now is all about walking and reviewing all these routes. So if you just imagine for a moment, you know, we've got 7,000 routes and we don't know um, the people who have made them. We don't know how good they are. Some of them will be terrible and we know they need to be better. Um, so we put a call out uh, late last year and about 80,000 people have signed up on our website saying they want to help with this challenge of walking and reviewing these website uh, routes. Um, as well as that, um, we've had about 800 groups sign up from across the country as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And fundamentally, the purpose of the website is to help us ho hold a national conversation about whether or not these routes are good enough to be part of a verified, trusted, slow ways network or not. And that's a conversation that happens you know, um, between individuals with themselves, 
it happens at a hyper local level just thinking about those routes that are uh, very close to towns or villages but it's also a national conversation with people tuning into this webinar this evening from across the country being on the same mission wanting to achieve very similar things but being connected through that hyper local connection so in order to be able to have that website we had to take some time and raise some funds and some support from various different places so we're very fortunate that sport england through their covid innovation fund um, all thinking about how we can make britain more resilient to the impact and effects of covid but also thinking about people's health in the future that funding helped us we also had some funding from past for all in scotland who have a sustainable transport fund who are keen to get more people out of cars and more people walking um, and we're excited about what we were working on. Support from the Pilgrim Trust, who are very keen to get more people walking who um, maybe wouldn't normally think to go on a journey on something like the Slow Ways. And then the Kestrelman Trust, who helped us right at the beginning with some seed funding to help just organize that uh, a hack day right at the very beginning of the project to actually just test out the idea to see whether it would work or, or not. We've also had support with geographic thinking and data and wisdom from um, Costain, Urban Good, Esri and Ordnance Survey as well, all fantastic partners that we're really, really grateful for all their, their help. So the website is really a place where you can arrive, be challenged to think about journeys you might like to walk um, just for the sheer pleasure of it, but you can also contribute by submitting reviews. So our call to action fundamentally around slow ways is to ask as many people as possible to choose a slow ways walking route to walk it or wheel it. And on the website, when we say wheel it, we may mean that if you're using um, a scooter or a wheelchair, then hopefully many of the routes will be um, usable for you. Um, lots of them won't be, but hopefully some will be, and we need to know about those. When we say wheeling, we don't mean cycling yet, but maybe we'll look at cycling in the future. And then leave a review. And a review fundamentally is about rating um, a route, leaving a comment and verifying whether or not it should be in the network or not. And, and Darren will touch on that in a moment as well. Fewer and far more determined people and will want to leave surveys and surveys are going into a deeper dive where you're up for answering nearly a hundred questions um, about a, a route, taking maybe a third longer to walk that route and then spend maybe 15, 20 minutes asking, answering a survey question when you completed it as well. And the purpose of that deeper survey is provide information on simple things like, is there accommodation on the route for less than 50 quid a night? Or is the route likely to be cow free? Lots of people were telling us they're afraid of walking through fields of cows, but also more important information for people who may be a dependent on wheelchairs to complete a route on information like gradient, path widths, the quality of the path, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, we're gonna have a webinar tomorrow evening focusing on how to actually do a survey. And you can imagine that if across 100,000 kilometers of Great Britain and 7,000 or plus routes, we have these incredible surveys, how powerful that could become. So just to say that when you're working with us um, and, and being outside in general, clearly everyone knows about COVID-19 um, and will be concerned about that. But, but please, whether you're working as an individual or in a group, um, think about, or just enjoying yourself as an individual or a group, um, think about using the Ramblers website to have really good guidance for individuals and groups on uh, England, Scotland and, and Wales. So tonight's webinar is focusing on how to use the website and it's been recorded and will go onto YouTube tomorrow or, or shortly after. And as I say, tomorrow evening is how to survey a route, which I hope some of you will consider joining. So that's a brief summary of what Slowways is about. There's a lot more to it um, than that, but I'm very aware that some of you may have watched previous presentations on, on this. Um, so I'm gonna pass over to Darren now, who's gonna take you on a guided tour of the new Slowways website. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dan. I'll just uh, share my screen and <clears throat> take over. Yep. So uh, it has been a really exciting, uh, it feels like a week already, but it's only been five days since we, we went live last Friday. And already we've had, uh, you know, 8,000 people sign up on the site and people have gone through and uh, surveying it and uh, and uh, but it's been really um, exciting from my point of view because it's pulled together uh, lots of different um, sort of components from across sort of the mapping world and across you know the internet. So the system's all built on open source software, which means that uh, it's it's relied on millions and millions of uh, lines of code that uh, the community have put together. Um, and um, we've also integrated with Esri and with What Three Words and the Ordnance Survey. 
and uh, a company called Ink Atlas as well for printing. So, um, and there'll be more integrations to come. And uh, but, so it's really exciting to pull together all these components that um, have just been sitting here um, waiting for us to use really. Um, and I uh, built a, a website, some of you might have remembered, um, from about 20 years ago called multimap.com. So I'm super excited to be back building mapping websites again. Um, so uh, this is the homepage, it's what we welcome people with today. It might evolve and change as we, as our mission evolves and changes. But um, the, the bit that I'm really excited about is these uh, headline stats at the bottom. So uh, you know, um, it, at the moment it just refreshes every day, but we might move that to real time. So already there's 7,540 routes, 39 routes on there. Um, you know, and that adds up to almost uh, 111,000 kilometers of, of, of mapping. Um, and already people have downloaded 2,860 routes since we've been going. So it's all really exciting. The numbers are, re are really brilliant. So it means that we're reaching lots of people. Um, and then underneath, we just have a, you know, we have our, our mission and then um, a nice uh, photo. But, you know, this site's all about the community. So, you know, if we get some nice photos on there, I'm sure we'll be, um, if, if people send us some nice photos or some nice photos in the surveys or uploaded to the site, I'm sure we'll be changing this homepage quite often. But yes, yeah, so you can always check back on this homepage and find out how many people have, have generated, have been adding routes to it as it ticks up. And, and I guess for me, what's really exciting is that although uh, it's a brand new website, it's packed full of public you know community information already because we've already got the uh the starter routes on there so um you know and and we've already got the grid and the settlements and everything so already it's a really feature rich website with loads of great uh, user generated content um so at this point um you can you can go we kind of try to keep things open so you can go in many different directions um, and but um, I'm going to take you one way, but you can actually close, hit the uh, cross button and close this uh, website down, uh, sorry, the, the panel down, and you can just start getting stuck into the, the routes and everything, the mapping behind it. But um, um, I, um, I quite fancy a trip to the seaside, so I'm going to uh, go and have a look at Margate. And um, uh, thanks to uh, Esri's uh, geographical systems and database and the audience survey, we get a really nice map up of, of Margate. And as you can see, there are uh, a number of slow ways that are heading in and out of Margate. Fortunately, this, the, the ones on the coast are a little bit trickier because they all head in one direction. Um, so we get a list of the places uh, that, that are near Margate and um, nearby slow ways. And then we can zoom in to actual, have a look at Margate itself and we get a map of the four um, slowways which are which uh, all part of that the the geometric grid that um, we, we see zoomed out for the uk um, sitting here so you can inter interact with the map here by clicking on a line and then going straight to that slow way uh, you can have a look at Herm, but you could actually go and, and get this view but for Herm bay as well so you could head, head over there I'm really making you want to go for a walk along the coast actually um, and then uh, you can interact with the map over on the right as well, uh, where we've got uh, different uh, layers from OpenStreetMap and the topography. And, um, and it's our intention to uh, keep, keep, uh, uh, keep adding new map layers as people ask for them and if we can negotiate license fees and costs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, there's a nice little uh, selector up there. Um, and then from here, you can see uh, the towns, the slow ways, the other slow ways that aren't, um, you know, which connect you to the rest of the country. And then you can actually click routes and you can see the actual routes that, uh, that people have, have, have created. And you can also uh, click on those and interact with those as well. Um, moving back down to uh, Margate itself, uh, we've got like a kind of a, a headline um, bit of information. Um, and I'll come back to why that's important in a bit, but we've also linked out to what three words as well. It's, it's a place you're not so familiar with. Um, and then you can see that we have a list of facilities at, at Margate, you know, within a, within a kilometre of this meeting place, which we think is really uh, helpful for people who, who might be starting out on, on, a, on a longer walk. Um, and this is where you come in. This data is all coming from uh, users who are filling, this, uh, filling in one of our place surveys. Um, and you can see it's, it's, this one's a really nice, simple one. So it's just a one page and it's like, is there a public toilet? Uh, is there a wheelchair accessible public toilet? Um, is there a mobility scooter home? That kind of thing. 
So, um, and, and the idea is that we want to crowd the sources information as well because things will change and people have different opinions and things like that. So um, you can see that, you know, there's definitely public toilet, there's one person said that, but also we're gonna show you who hasn't said that and who isn't sure as well. So we don't know if there's mobility skews high, for example. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, it'd be great. I mean, I think 650 people, 600 people have already done surveys of their local places and filled in this form for us. So um, you can, uh, once you're logged in, you can just do a quick uh, place survey for us. And, it, um, and that uses another bit of Esri technology that we hook up to as well. Um, and then underneath, we've got this uh, dashboard that uh, I've made yesterday. So I'm quite, quite <laughs> proud of it. Dan was, uh, Dan and I were talking about what would be really interesting way to start uh, thinking about the data um, and sort of set up a bit of uh, maybe we might get some rivalry between towns or something. So you can see that the different, the four different slow ways um, have got uh, a route each between them. And uh, but Margate board says it's got two routes because someone's uploaded one uh, and you can see whether or not they've been reviewed, whether or not they've been surveyed, whether or not they've been verified and how many times they've been downloaded. So um the verification process is quite simple uh, when you when we ask you for a review um, we ask you whether or not the route is good enough to be in the slow ways network and if it is you say yes and if it's not you say no and if it's if you're not sure you say maybe and to get the 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 um the hello uh, purple snail to show that you're a verified uh, route we need to get three yeses there so and that's another great uh, activity that people can do if they get to walk these routes or know them very well to uh, to verify them for us and then um, people get more confidence to go um so we've got uh, an overview there and like I, I, I you know dan and i probably have to tone it down a bit because we go a bit stats mad and a bit geo mad so we're trying to keep this as, as kind of as as uh, top level as possible and then you get another a chance to see the slow ways that are connecting uh, different locations and you can see that there's the two foot there's a there's a nuance basically there's a difference between the the uh, margate broad stairs routes the first one is graded at uh, as a as a three and an x um and the uh the second one's graded as well it's ungraded so a surveyor has been through a so train one of our uh users has really kindly done the survey uh, done the survey training and then done a survey of the route and filled in the information and this is where we think the site's going to be really exciting because you know, if you if you want to do this walk uh, walk from if you want to walk to Broadstairs from Margate, you're going to do it for a different load of different reasons. You're going to do it for for pleasure. You're going to do it for sea views. You're going to do it to be out in nature, and you and you might just do it because you need to get there really quickly. So um, and you might do it in a wheelchair. So um, we think that the the idea is that there will be you know hopefully people will be adding a multitude of of different routes across here, and over time. Uh, the best route, the most reviewed route, or the shortest route, or the, the one that works for you will become obvious and also uh, bubble to the top. So we have this idea that um, there'll be a succession of, 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 of routes as they, uh, as they evolve. Um, and you can see there's quite a few, un, even though the website looks really full, there's quite a few un, unsurveyed routes. So please uh, have a look at that for us. So I'm going to go to uh, Broadstairs because that one looked quite an interesting one. Um, uh, let me just turn off some of these things so I can see where I'm going. Uh, so I think Broadstairs is over here. No, that's Home Bay. <laughs> Broadstairs is down here. Um, so, um, so you can see that there's the two different, so you get an overview of, so this is the slow way with the, with the two routes on it. There's a difference, there's a nuance between the two. Uh, one of them goes uh, to north and one of them goes to the south. So uh, we can choose to have a look at the one that goes to uh, the north, I think. Um, and we can see this is the actual route page. And this page is jam full of information that's going to help you have a, have a successful route, basically, successful walk. Um, so we've got an, uh, a, a map. And once again, you can go in here and you can change to the, you know, the topographic view. Um, aerial photos might come. You can see the other slow ways that this connects to you can see all the other routes and then you can interact with those as well um, but um, you also get the headline information uh, whether or not so a ghost, it's got a ghost snail so it hasn't been verified yet we'd love to see that turn purple because it looks really, really cute and um, you can see that someone um, created this as one of the really early routes uh, in, in the start of April 
and you can see it's distance and it's ascent and de descent um, and the grading um, which we can go and have a look at uh, you know you've got a full in-depth um, got a full in-depth explanation of what the grading and the access uh, means on the accessibility page um, and as we go down we can see that there's some actions here so you know, one of the things you might if you're an experienced walker you're going to do with is you're going to click the download to gpx and you'll uh, download the file and it pops up down there and then you can go and use the gpx file to um, walk that route using your your your, your favorite uh, mapping app so uh, the gpx files work with all of the um, common ones that that we know um, and then over here in more options you've got uh, other abilities so you can um, save it for later you can agree to you can you can say you want to survey it you can review it you can suggest a better route and um, you can go off to this uh, great cool little website called ink atlas that we that we've partnered with who uh, let you print out a nice view and you can even do uh, you can do like a uh, whole a zeros of your favorite uh, slow way if you fancy it um, so um, that's kind of like you know, in, in, in a nutshell, in a snail shell, um, how the site works. Um, but under, you know, so the more you delve into it, the more detail there is. So um, here, uh, we haven't got a very exciting uh, description for this one because it was created by um, volunteers who didn't get that richness. But when people add their new routes, they get to put a proper description in, and a photo, you see a little photo of a little bit of Marlboro One, um, which is looking quite cute. Um, and then you can see that there's an alternative route here and hopefully that will get surveyed soon so that uh, we can decide which one is going to have, be the easiest for you to walk or the hardest if that's your, if that's, if that's what you want. Um, and then we've got these tabs across here. Um, so we've got the surveys, which is where we start to really delve into the depth, deep um, um, uh, detail of, the, of, of that uh, of that route. Sorry, my screen's just changed colour. It's really been upsetting because it's getting late. Um, so you can see, you know, we've got a description. So grade three means it includes rough surfaces and it may include small boulders and potholes and shallow ruts and loose gravel and short muddy sections. And it's a grade X, which means it's it's not wheelchair friendly. So it'll have at least one style or flight of steps or something that makes it very difficult or potentially difficult for uh, wheelchair users. Um, but it's only been surveyed once, so um, and this will build an average as we go, and, uh, and it will be all open, completely open, so people can delve in. So, like, if we go, if we zoom down uh, this section, we've got similar kind of thing about are there any facilities in the middle of the route? So, is there a restaurant? Is there a toilet? Is there somewhere to camp? Um, are there any challenges? Um, you know, and and. And this is interesting, I was looking at this one earlier and I was thinking, well, actually, it's all gone red, which makes it look a bit bad, but actually it's, it, it, it's really good. It's a really promising thing because there isn't any wading or scrambling or climbing. So I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe we might change the colour scheme here because it's, it's kind of round the wrong way. Um, and the same for obstacles, um, you know, so, um, uh, and as you know, so we can see that it's not free of uh, drop curve, which is why it's got its X really. Uh, and this uh, great surveyor has even uh, measured the narrowest part of the path for us. So, um, and then we have whether or not it's been successfully completed with somebody who's got a dog or a pram or a standard wheelchair or an off road wheelchair or a mobility scooter as well. Um, these are all great because uh, the person hasn't done that. And then whether or not there's been an expert as well who's gone through, who's trained for this kind of thing. So um, hopefully we've got some ex, ex, um, some rights of way officers or some ex, uh, access um, experts on this call who might be interested to go out and uh, have a busman's holiday for us. And then, you know, we've got, you know, uh, almost uh, about two thirds of the route is lit at night and uh, I didn't skip over Dan's carriage bits. And then uh, the idea is that, so if there's an actual inaccuracy with this data, uh, you can report it. Um, but if, if, so it's kind of like, if something's obviously wrong, like I suppose we've had ferries in, in landlocked places and things like that. But really the best thing to do is if, if you think you've got more information or better knowledge, please just do a survey yourself because that will kind of add to the richness. We're going for the, um, was it the, the, uh, the, the knowledge of the commons here. And then you can see that uh, Mr. 
Mrs. Uh, Hemmings did the survey in April 21st, and you can actually drill right down into the uh, the detail and all the answers that they gave um, if you if you'd like to. Um, and you can also um, there's a there's another one that's quite interesting, which I I might just pop to, which is uh, I think it's Kuwait. It's got quite a memorable name where uh, there's two options for the survey. You can actually give us a um, a photo survey. So here's uh, the, the person, uh, Ross, walked, walked this on Saturday and took photos as he went through and the app enables this and it geocodes all the photos for us. And you can see that um, someone's given us, you know, it, Ross has given us great detail and it says how far through the route this photo is taken. So that's 0 0.1 kilometers and then it's 0 0.9. And um, we think, I'm really excited about this, um, how, it, how it's all coming to life, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's all open and, and, and public and we just want to kind of get the, the, uh, the commons uh, sol solving this, this great problem of, um, or this difficult problem of access for everybody. Um, so please do a survey. Um, to, do, to do this a survey, you have to uh, do some training so that um, you know what, what all these questions are. Um, and, and um and then once you've done that on every route you get a little button here that says survey this route and it's up at the top as well so you can just click on that and you can go off and um do the survey but we do kind of check that you've done the training first and then we've got some more geeky stuff here so um you've got the elevation profile of the, of the route pretty hilly actually um and then uh we've also got Oh, so this isn't Margate, that's fine. Um, we've also got uh, whether or not, you know, we've got a database that's looked up the routes to say whether or not uh, it's on in pasture or urban land. And uh, it's got all the other land uses in there, um, which we're hoping to do some more analysis on later. Um, I, uh, so, and then the final tab is a review. So Ross has left us a lovely review as well, uh, legend. And you can see that, um, he says he had a great walk. Uh, the off road sections are well worth visiting if you can. And then there's a bit that isn't signposted, so it's fantastic. And then we can start a conversation with him. So um, if people know more information about that or if it changes with time, um, they can uh, update that. And then uh, so you can, you can reply. And also, I guess if he says something horrible, then you can report it to us and our customer service team. Who are quite stretched at the moment, uh, but um, our customer service team will do what they can and, and review that. Uh, so yeah, I'd urge you to, if, you, if this is a route that you know really well, or if you're going to pop out for a walk over the weekend, if you could give us a review when you get back, that'd be fantastic. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to do. So um, I think that's pretty much the journey planner, Darren. You've got to show us the journey planner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd say worth it. That's pretty much yeah. it for the route for the uh, for the route page, Dan. There's still loads more to come though. Um, so you can see here that um, there's the ability to uh, save to a, a waitlist. So a waitlist is something we've we Dan and I invented uh, one Friday afternoon. I think uh, it's like a playlist, but for routes. So you can start to collect these together and. I'm fascinated to find out how people are using this already. Like within a, within a three hours, somebody emailed and said, I can only have 50 routes on my, my way list. I need to do more because I'm doing lands into general growth. So we quickly coded away and, uh, and up the, uh, the number that you could have. So, um, and, and that's it. I really love hearing from you about how you use the site and which bits could be more useful for you. So please, uh, at the bottom, there's, uh, there's like a bug of uh, report form. Um, that uh, which helps me um, understand if there's any issues like you can only have 50, yeah, 50 routes in your waitlist. So what's a waitlist? So um, I've made one. Here's one I made earlier. It's called uh, C2C because I love that coast to coast uh, route up, up north. And uh, it's made up of 23 of our slowways joined together. And I can click here to view it. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a dream really for me. It's just made up of, of, of of user generated routes across the country um, and we could uh, have a look at or oh, I'm probably going to break the website I won't do that uh, break my uh, connection rather but you can have a look at all the slow ways in the country as well at the same time you can interact with this map um, and then you can see uh, uh, a breakdown of every single uh, route that makes up that slow way and you can go off and, and, and view it and you can see the distance 
and you can download the GPX file or you can just remove it from uh, this kind of collection. Um, and, and this bit is kind of like, uh, it's quite early in its development. So there'll be lots of bits of functionality that uh, we'll be adding. So like you might want to rename a, um, a, uh, a waitlist or you might want to um, share it, give it to a friend or something like that. But you can here already, you can take the link and, oh sorry, if you make it public, if you click the yes, it's by default, it's no. But if you click the yes to make the way this public, you can then share that with your friends. And so you can go off and uh, have a look at this. So this is public to everybody. So go and have a look at my coast to coast way, uh, way list if you'd like. Um, so over in the, um, so I, the way there's a collection and so we've got this page at the top which is kind of like these are the routes that i've saved already that i'm, I'm interested in doing um and then underneath you've got the waylist where um you can uh start to build build up a, a sort of a, a directory of, of, of routes and i i love to i would just i'm gonna hop in here all the time to see what kind of things people are, are building for us from from this um so in, the, in my account, there's a, a couple of other things. So uh, there's profile, which is uh, your your username, your email address, um, and whether or not, but uh, in future, we're thinking that we might make your a bit of your profile public so that people can find out about, a little bit about you. And we've had some requests for people to, to, uh, to be put in contact with other people nearby. So we might think about doing a postcode thing so we can do alerts and that kind of thing. And you can see that I've completed my surveyor training, which is um, which is uh, how I'm allowed to uh, click on the survey this route button. Um, but if you want to complete your surveyor training, it's either in your profile here at this section, or it's also on every page, every route page where you can do a survey. And then you can do it and edit your information uh, here, and you can change your password and sign up for our newsletter, which I think there's one coming out tomorrow. Um, so I think that's everything in the, oh, so, uh, you know, you don't need to kind of worry about bookmarking those of things. You can see all the routes that you've downloaded here and download them again. And then hopefully you'll remember once you've downloaded one to go back to uh, the route that you visited and leave it, leave a review for it. Um, uh, the website uh, is, is, is uh, works really nicely on on desktop. I think. Let me know if you spot any problems. We haven't had any feedback, uh, negative feedback about that, um, and it works quite nicely on on a, a recent iPad. Um, and then you know, mobile is quite. It gets a little bit trickier just sort of uh, you know manipulating it. But um, something that we're working on all the time to improve how it works across all the different mobile phones. I imagine it's quite a job. Um, so we've got this uh, kind of the final uh, most most interesting part of the site that Dan's itching for me to show is the uh, journey planner. So um, it asks you uh, if you're happy to share your location with it. We don't know what your location is that you, you share, but um, if you let your browser do that, then it put me to where I am in Chiswick um, and you can see uh, all the nearby um, routes and you can turn in the slow ways and turn off the towns and turn off the routes. Um, and generally wander around there. And the idea here is so that this is a kind of a waylist builder, or it can be a waylist builder. You could use it in the field as well, though, on your phone, because it will geolocate your, from your phone. But um, so I can say, I quite fancy doing this, but I'm getting in the way of myself here. Um, so I want to fancy doing this one, which is uh, between Acton and uh, Jeffers Bush, which is called Akshi. And so I'm going to click on it and um, Um, and it's going to add actually to uh, my journey planner. So now I can I can say, well, I'm going to add it to a waitlist. So I'm going to create a new waitlist, which is going to be uh, home walks and save it to there. And that's saved actually to uh, that one. And I'm going to go right Well, I'm going to go from actually, I'm going to go to Shekin one. These are great names, aren't they? Um, and then click add and that will add that to my waitlist and then I'm going to go across to, what is this one? Uh, Ken Kni. Um, so I'm going to add that. So I'm built, you can see, you know, quite quickly I can build up a nice uh, database, a nice list uh, portfolio of routes and we can keep going into the centre of London if we wanted to. Um, and you can just click on my home walks button and there's my playlist, play waitlist. 
Um, and you can see that it is private at the moment, so no one else can see that um, until we click the yes. Um, but I've got all the information I need to go and do a nice walk from Acton to um, Hyde Park Corner. Sounds great. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm just going to think, so I think this, this, so it's like, I know a better way for uh, to get from uh, south 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 to Ealing. So I'm going to go to the, the uh, slow way uh, south or one. I'm going to make a south or two. I'm not going to do this live, but um, so I'm going to suggest a new route option between south and Ealing. And that's it. We've had lots of emails from people saying, "Oh, this route isn't a very good one. It goes across some, you know goes across a busy road, or it's alongside um, a road we don't like." And and I guess it's not necessarily in our hands to be able to manipulate everyone's routes so that they're perfect. But what we'd love you to do is upload another, you know, your version of it so that um, everybody else can, can um, look at it and review it and hopefully it'll bubble to the top and become part of this formal uh, Slowways network in the future. So, um, you know, we ask that it follows our methodology, which is safe, it respects laws and codes and it's accessible for as many people as possible. It's direct, as Dan mentioned earlier, it should be off road, it should be somewhere to eat and sleep every five to 10 K. It needs a start and stop place, which is uh, a train or bus station, easy to navigate, and I guess optional, but I'm not sure if we're gonna get this one uh, from South Hill Treating to be beautiful, but it, it will definitely be enjoyable. Um, and we should, we say it's, they should use established routes. So my C to C route uh, should should use some of those official uh, routes across country. And then the important thing is that it must start and finish at the published meeting point. So it needs to start within uh, 50 meters of the two uh, endpoints, so that we can ultimately we want to be able to do routing through the network and that kind of thing. So to maintain the integrity, it, it's um, it's great that it starts and finishes at those points. It's quite tricky to do, but we've got a guide on how to do it. Um, and then route description, please go wild uh, with that and, and um, give us as much information as you can. I think the databases can handle it. Don't take that as a challenge. Um, and then uh, upload a photo. Um, we're going to introduce more photos uh, during, during the week. And then you just simply click, choose it, upload your GPX file. Um, I don't know if anyone's had any problems recently, but um, I've been busy coding at this during the week. so. It doesn't matter which way your GPX file goes now, it doesn't have to go and follow the West or Eastern methodology, methodology that we used for naming slow notes. You can go either way. And also, uh, we're accepting tracks as well as routes now. So, uh, that was really complicated coding, made my head hurt. But, um, so, hopefully, that's, that's more reliable. We've seen lots of routes going in today, so our numbers are, are building. And then we just ask you to check uh, our terms and conditions, uh, which are all about the openness and the fact that we want to share this network forwards um so as it's a community asset um and i think that apart from the fact that um at the bottom we've got um information about the routes and grades we've got faqs i mean that we've had so many people on the website that we kind of hopefully uh, we do know what the frequently asked questions are so and that's updated regularly uh, there's a place to get help and you can, I, I get I get i love answering people's questions so i get quite into it um, and there's a place to report the bugs um, we've got a, a travel fund for people who can't go walking and it, any of our merchandise um, that we sell in our shop, um, any profits from that go towards the travel fund so we can help people walk uh, who might not be able to um, and the same for um, if we receive any donations that way. Um, and that's it I think. Um, uh, in the stories page, this is another bit where you come in, you know, we're really keen to share people's stories so the person who is creating the lands and John O'Groats um a way list um you know he we're, we're hoping he's going to come back and report on that with some photos and we might make a little mini blog and a little mini story um and then to launch we've got this lovely video that um, one of the volunteers just Mountfield did for us um and i urge you to go and have a look at that because it's just it's beautiful i think that's it Great, thank you very much, Darren. Thank you very much. It was a great quick tour of the website, going into quite a lot of depth. Uh, thank you very much for that. So I think what we're going to do now, uh, if you want to close your screen, Darren, yeah, um, is we'll go through the Q&A from the top and we'll sort of 
um, see which of us are best to answer these different questions. Um, what I'd like to just reinforce that before I dive into those is that the website then is built around the idea of the fact that we know that not all the routes are good enough. So we want to find the routes that are good enough and those that aren't good enough. We want to create new routes that are better than the routes that are the ones that are there already. And we do that by people walking the route, reviewing it, um, and uh, saying when you leave a review whether or not it's good enough to be in the network or not. So if a route is badly drawn, or you think isn't good enough for someone to walk, uh, they wouldn't enjoy work walking it, you wouldn't recommend it to a friend, you wouldn't walk it again, and we want you to give it a thumbs down basically and say it shouldn't be in the network. Whereas if you would recommend it to a friend or you would walk it again, then we want to re you to recommend that it should be in the network. Um, that doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean that the whole route is absolutely wonderful. It doesn't mean that the whole route's accessible. It doesn't mean that the whole route is completely danger free or anything like that because just re crossing roads can be dangerous. It might be that the route isn't drawn perfectly as well, but it might still be good enough for someone uh, to follow. If on the other hand, you come across a route which is actually dangerous for some reason, or it cuts across private land, then we're really keen that you actually report those to us so we can remove those routes or edit them to get them back on the site in a way that um, is actually sort of is safe. So if you can imagine that the, the distinction there, normally what, what you'd like to do is to leave an Amazon star review where you give it a number of stars and say whether it's good enough for a friend and then tell us whether, whether it should be in the network that way or not, but only really report issues to us if you think that there is um, a danger that we you think we need to be dealing with. Um, and as you work through our forums and other places, if you can help develop that culture, that'd be fantastic. What we'll do now with the remaining 15 minutes is people have been um, um, answer, asking lots of questions. There's 83 questions. If your question isn't answered now and you can't find the answer on the frequently asked questions part of the website, we'd recommend that you go to the forum, which you'll need a new login and password for, I'm afraid, but use the forum to ask questions there. And either other people um, who are volunteering on the initiative or other people who know about it might answer the questions or we'll answer them directly. So if we don't get them through them all tonight, then please do what well, we won't do. Please do do that. So, and as well as that, you'll see that on the Q&A, there's, you can thump, give a thumbs up for questions if you think they're more important to answer. So firstly, Jenny says, um, with seven thumbs up, there don't seem to be any routes connecting to the large village in which I live or to nearby villages. There's a great network of pathways around here. So how can these be added in? The answer to that is that the two and a half thousand locations that make up the nodes for the ends of the different routes within the network were picked because they are, are all the towns and all the cities, the 1,000 most populated places in the country, and then lots of strategically important villages. What that means is that actually the vast majority of the UK population, GB G G population, are within a short walk of a slow way. But it does mean that some smaller villages um, aren't currently included in the network. And we've done that so the, net, so the network as a whole is far clearer and easier for people to understand as a whole. There's nothing stopping people from those villages that aren't included from walking to a neighboring slow way. And in the future, we'll hopefully have routing a bit like on Google where you put in where you are and it'll tell you how to get to that particular place. But there is a future where we will review what, which all the nodes are and what should be connected. So what I'd recommend Jenny is going into our forum, telling us about the village that you live in and why you think it should be included. And then on the forum, people can discuss that. And then when we do a review, we can look at potentially including it. Um, Tracy has asked, how do I access the survey training? Do you answer that one, Darren? Sorry, yes. So, so the survey training is linked uh, from your profile and also on any page where there are surveys, it knows if you're logged in and if it knows if you've um, done the training. And if you haven't done those, there'll be a little link saying, uh, here's, here's the survey training. And then it opens uh, another app um, where with, some, with uh, a guide. And then once you've done that, you tick it at the end, and then next time you go to the survey page, it won't show you do the survey training, it will say, go and do a survey. Great, thank you very much. Um, and um, Nicola, are the places preset, or can you create a, a route to a new town or village? So as I just said, you can't create a new town or village. So if you want to um, suggest a new town or village, you need to do that in our forum, but it won't happen for some time, I'm afraid. It's, it's a limitation of clarity is that not all routes and not all places are included um, in, in the network. Tom asks, is there a time scale that we'd like to get the reviewing done by or is it open-ended? Well, actually we would like to get it done um, 
as quickly as we can in terms of an, in of an initial one, because the sooner we have reviews done and surveys done of the network, the sooner we can start doing really enjoyable things around offering routes for people, for example, saying you want to get from Huddersfield to Slough. Um, these are all the routes you can take, which are cow free, where you can stay for less than 50 quid a night. So the sooner we get the job done, the sooner we can start doing that. But at the same time, Slow Ways is a large scale, long term initiative. I can imagine us being at this for many years to come and working at getting this to a really good condition, literally many years to come. So it, it is open ended as far as um, anyone's concerned, I think, really. So thank you for that question. And then but, um, the start. Uh, oh, yes. So I apologize for my Mac. It's too noisy. I agree. It's been busy. It can't cope with video and, uh, and demoing sites at the same time. Hopefully the fans are calming down now. Um, but uh, how do you know where the start of a route is? Uh, well, it's, it's marked on the map with the purple. And then uh, if you go to the actual places page uh, for, for the place at either end, you can see the, uh, the Easting Storm of Things and the grid reference and the What Three Words. And we love What Three Words and they're good friends of ours. So um, I recommend using them to pinpoint your, your, yourself within, uh, within the necessary, was it, is it 10 meter squares, are they? I think. So, um, uh, and then also on the Suggest page, there's a little table as well with that information on it. And you can also just zoom in a lane as well. So on the actual map itself, just zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and you'll see where that starting point as well is. Um, Carol asks, can you do more on downloading? It's proving a problem if not a GPX. Yeah, I, and this is this is this is kind of like I'm I'm, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Carol. You know, um, firstly, but you know, it's like we it's like we've got a limited amount of resource, and it's like what are we going to focus on? And I'm. F you know, we're focusing on presenting the routes to people, not the actual uh, mechanics of viewing a, a, a GPX file and, and that kind of thing. The OS um, Maps app works really nicely and it integrates with us really well. You click the, the GPX, your phone downloads it and it just appears in the OS Maps app. Um, and that's really good for following it. Um, you can print it out using uh, Incatlas that I showed you. Um, and also you could use the journey planner and you, or you could use a route page and just as Dan says, zoom right in and uh, it should be pretty good. But we, we like over the next couple of months, we're gonna be really experimenting with different ways of, of getting people around the country. So it might be that it's an Instagram feed of that route and things like that, that are bouncing around our heads anyway. So uh, yeah, it's difficult. Um, it, uh, you know, there are lots of apps that do it. We aren't gonna build that app today um, because it would take us, you know, would take our focus away from what we need to do. Thanks, Darren. Paul asks, are there well-defined start and end points for each route? Um, so yes, there are. On every place page, uh, you'll see, as Darren said, uh, coordinates and also what three words for that precise location. Um, and also when you go to submit a, um, a new route, that those coordinates come up there as well. And Paul also asks, is there guidance on the use of GPX files and linking to apps such as OS? I thought that was your, yeah, it was your favourite one. There's a, there is a, the, it, we, we toyed with this as well. We had a big page that was kind of explaining what to do with the OS, with the GPX file, but now there's a separate part in the FAQs. And you know, if we need to make, we might make some videos over this as well. But um, um, um. Yeah, you know, it, it is it is a challenge, and it either works seamlessly or it opens some annoying program on your Mac or your computer that doesn't do anything. So, um, but uh, we we do, yeah, there are a couple of apps that we recommend already for this. Yeah. Um, so if you go to click to download a GPX, um, then actually it says, "Are you using a GPX for the first time?" and it recommends some different app, apps. And then someone anonymous has said what is the best way to produce a GPX? So just to say for anyone who's like a complete, not understanding this language, music files often saved on, as an MP3, video files are often called an MP4. People often used to using Word documents or PDF documents. When it comes to routes, they are handled as GPX files, which is just the file that's used to save the particular route. So to produce a GPX, you need to have a map platform that will let you to draw lines on the map that you can then share. Um, we have collaborated most with and recommend using OS Maps, um, who have a, a small subscription price to use their platform that you should be aware of. Um, but that all, all, all the stuff they're doing works seamlessly with us in terms of giving routes to us. And at the other end, uh, Darren's currently working with the team at OS. So very soon, 
when you click on more options on a route page, you go to link off and actually go straight to an OS map and the OS maps app with that, that route there as well. And um, so hopefully that'll be useful to you. Um, right, Martin has asked, some of the choices of routes look a little bit odd, linking smaller rather than larger settlements. And why is it a triangulation? Why not a square? Um, um, and I'm just gonna just answer it from that point. So what I'd recommend for anyone who's curious about the history of why we've created the structure of the networks where we have, to look on the frequently asked questions of our website. Just to say that, that what we did was, like I said before, is we found those two and a half thousand places which were the places which were um, most populated town cities and strategically important. The Slowways is primarily an inter-town and inter-city network. It's not really designed for getting you around within suburbs, within cities. Actually, Google um, and other platforms do a very good job, and City Mapper and things do a very good job of getting you around within towns and cities. It's about, more about getting you between places and us be able to say, right, we want to ideally have a future where you might say you're in um, Southampton and you want to get yourself to Inverness, that we can give you an entirely trusted network where you know that everywhere along that way has been recommended by other people who have walked those routes before. Actually, several people have walked them before. The triangular shapes and the rule of making sure there's a node at the end of each of the corner of the triangle makes it optically far easier for the human brain to see and imagine journeys. But then when we chose which places to connect, what the volunteers were doing who peer reviewed a process of choosing those places, they weren't just looking at the neighboring place that might want to be connected. They were imagining flows of people between two, three, four places away as well. So what that means is that sometimes places that you might think should be connected on two sides of a triangle haven't been connected and may lose out slightly in the network because there are larger settlements, town, cities that are maybe two or three routes away. And people are imagining people from Bristol trying to get through to Southampton, for example, might want to have a clear way through to complete that, that journey. So it does mean that some places miss out but there's nothing stopping anyone from using their own creativity to plot a route to the nearest part of the slow way. So in creating clarity, we've, we've made compromises, but as the initiative develops, we're gonna to listen to people and we may have new layers in the future as well. Uh, the uh, Q and A, thank you, I'm glad, I'm glad you're finding them useful. That was really nice. Um, uh, on our YouTube channel, Slow Ways, um, you, can, you can find them. You can find all of them there and watch them back. And there's one tomorrow on uh, the surveying of the routes. Great. Um, Graham, um, how much of the route is muddy is one of the questions in the review page. At the moment, the ground is amazingly dry, but after a couple of days or longer, this should dramatically change. How to answer the question. So what we ask for on the survey, when we will do a survey, is to survey it based on the conditions that you can see today and the photographs would then reflect that as well. Um, but in the description about a route, you're able in the description to say that you have local knowledge or you're aware that a particular route would become more muddy. The ambition then is that in the future that the route will be surveyed actually maybe three or four times over in different seasons. And so people will then be able to build up more of a picture of what a route may actually be like. I, I, reviewed a sur I, I um, surveyed a route recently between South Hall and Wembley um, and I put in the route description and alongside photographs saying it was very clear that there were sections that would become muddy when it rained. So we're trying to find a, a, some compromises around this as well. But what we can't have is everyone predicting how bad things might become the whole time, because otherwise you wouldn't walk along the Thames footpath, would you? Because the whole thing could be flooding the whole time, for example. Yeah, and um, um, and we, we store the date and the time of the surveys and the pictures. So uh, you can, you, you know, it might be that in a year's time, we can do some clever analysis on that as well. Andy has asked, can we review just sections of a slow way? So you're very welcome to leave a, a comment, um, but I think that it would be a bit disingenuous to say whether or not a route should be in, a, uh, in the network or not, or having a certain number of stars when you haven't experienced the whole thing. It may be that you experience something really horrible about a route that means that, do you know what, quite clearly walking over this motorway isn't going to work out. So I'm going to say it shouldn't be in the network, flag it as dangerous and give it uh, one star. You may have that experience. But otherwise, um, you know, you sort of eat your way through the restaurant before you decide the, the whole review, I think would probably be um, my sort of way of describing that. So by all means, walk just sections of slow ways, but don't condemn a slow way without knowing that um, 
it, it should be condemned and equally don't praise a slow way and give it five stars and say it should be in the network if you haven't experienced the whole thing either and then uh, steve um th this is a this is um obviously a vital um point that you make about uh changing the about the remembering colorblind people um we did do we thought we did a, we did do a lot of work on the colors and we did try and choose colors that were a bit um were one were bolder but also were compatible with um with uh, the web accessibility standards so um we kind of hope that the fundamental design of this is colorblind friendly colorblind friendly for colorblind people with color blindness um, and if it isn't please email me at darren at slowways.org and i'll i'd love to chat to you and find out which bits aren't working you know as you know our initial designs were designed to be um color you know fully compliant um and uh, you know over the last couple of months things have evolved and changed and like for example the green on the maps was something that we added later so that might might not work so uh, please if you've got any feedback on that i'd love to i'd love to find out some more yeah Great. And I think the, the key thing for us with colour blindness and things like the grades were making sure that at least the contrast was great, even if the colours aren't necessarily what's going to work for everybody. Um, and actually, we haven't talked about the grades at all this evening, which you can find out more about um, on the website. But essentially, what you can see is that the numbers, some people ask about this, one through five tell you about the worst quality of path along a route, whereas X, Y, Z describe whether or not there's likely to be a barrier there that would stop someone who has mobility requirements around a wheelchair or scooter or something like that. So X means there's at least one style or flight of steps in the way, whereas Y, for example, should mean that the route is clear of any big barriers like that. So um, our time is up. It's been fantastic having you all with us this evening. We're going to save the questions on the screen and, and see if there's anything there that we can work on to improve things. But otherwise, please go to the forum on our website and please chat there and add any questions there if you uh, want to ask further questions but we're super excited about collaborating with you all in the future on creating this incredible piece of national infrastructure that we can all enjoy for generations to come so thank you very much for joining us this evening thanks for being involved with uh, slow ways check in for the survey training if you want to, to tomorrow night and hopefully we'll see you on a slow way sometime soon fantastic thank you for joining us it's really exciting <laughs>